The unfinished steppe pyramid, also known as the Buried Pyramid, was found by Zakaria Goniam, an Egyptian archaeologist in 1951. Goniam noticed its odd rectangular shape in the desert while excavating the nearby Unius complex. A three-part rubble-coursed enclosure was initially discovered, and by digging to its bottom, it was found to be 5 meters tall and 18 meters thick. However, he later discovered that the wall further extended on both sides to dimensions of 520 meters on its north-south axis and 180 meters to the east-west. Predictably, the site is full of false doors and niches. Yet, what no one predicted was the unique sarcophagi, which was soon discovered thereafter. Built with a sliding door and largely believed to predate the Egyptian civilization, Indeed, the construction of the Great Pyramids themselves, due to the current condition of the site, Zakaria purportedly opened the sarcophagus in front of the world press. Yet unfortunately, or rather predictably, like the many other sites discovered in the modern day in this most mysterious of areas, was completely empty. Presumably looted, though it is indeed possible that a cover-up of its contents had occurred just prior to the announcement of its discovery. Regardless of this absence of contents, it is thought to have been the burial chamber of Sikhemket. This pharaoh, known as the second of the third dynasty of ancient Egypt, has been claimed as having reigned over Egypt circa 2686 to 2613 BC and is placed at the beginning of the Old Kingdom of Egypt. What makes the find all the more intriguing, however, along with its claimed predating of the height of the Egyptian empire, is the unique style of the tomb itself. Clearly an out-of-place artifact, or possibly a sarcophagi of the original builders of the pyramids themselves, with the embalming technique later adopted and continued by later inhabitants of the Giza Plateau. A clear strategic power move by those who have claimed to have built the pyramids, yet also completely absent of any explanation of how, with its seemingly impossibly sized megalithic blocks found within the constructions. Furthermore, to support the accusation of a modern looting of this tomb is the fact that nearby, Sicaria Gonium also found 21 solid gold bracelets, small mussel shells, and faience corals covered with gold leaf. It would seem these items, although priceless, were less important than hiding the contents of the tomb. The question is, if this was indeed a looted tomb of the past, why were these now priceless relics seemingly left undiscovered, while the incredibly well-hidden sarcophagi was completely ransacked? It is a find which we find highly compelling. The Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, Due to the large illustration of the devil on the inside of the giant book, it is also connected to the legend surrounding its creation. It is largely thought to have been created in the early 12th century in the Benedictine monastery of Bodlegisa in Bohemia. According to legend, the codex was created by a character known as Hermann the Recluse in the Benedictine monastery near Chirdim in the Czech Republic. The monastery was destroyed sometime in the 15th century during the Hussite Revolution. The codex was thankfully rescued and taken to the Benedictine Monastery in Brzezivnov. From 1477 to 1593, it was kept in the library of a monastery until it was taken to Prague in 1594 to form part of the collections of the Empire Rudolf II. In 1648, it was taken as war booty by the Swedish army. In 1697, it would escape destruction again when a fierce fire broke out at the royal castle in Stockholm, subsequently destroying the royal library. The codex was rescued from the flames by being thrown from a window. According to the vicar, Johann Eriksons, the codex landed on a bystander, injuring him quite badly. In September 2007, after 359 years of changing hands in numerous ways, the Codex Gigas was returned to the National Library in Stockholm. But what makes the Codex particularly special and worthy of further investigation are the characteristics within the writings of this enormous book, which astonishingly 
support the story of it being created in just one sitting. A National Geographic documentary included interviews with manuscript experts who argued that certain evidence, in particular the handwriting analysis and the long-standing credit to Herman Inclusus, aka Herman the Recluse, indicate the manuscript was indeed, somehow, the work of just one scribe. According to the historical legend, which was already academically recorded by the Middle Age, the scribe was a monk who broke his monastic vows and was sentenced to be walled up alive. In order to avoid this harsh penalty, he promised to create, in one night, a book to glorify the monastery forever. This book would include all human knowledge. Near midnight, he became sure that he could not complete this task alone, so he made a special prayer, not addressed to God, but to the fallen angel Lucifer, asking him to help finish the book in exchange for the monk's soul. The devil would accept this deal, completing the rest of the manuscript, the monk would add the devil's picture out of gratitude for his help. Many specialists within the area of writing, forensic analysis, and also numerous replication attempts have indicated that the level of uniformity within the writings lean towards the impossible. Not only does it strongly indicate that the book was created in just one sitting, but is perfectly scribed throughout, a feat considered to be beyond that of human capabilities. The analysis also shown that the writings alone, if written by one person, would take over five years to complete, with the additional illustrations adding another 20. Yet it must be noted, it has been concluded on many occasions that no mere mortal is capable of such uniform writings within this time period. There would have inevitably been some form of evolution within the style. Of course, it must be remembered Although there is a highly compelling story attached to the origins of this giant book, its creation still largely remains a mystery. How big would you have to be for it to comfortably rest in one's lap? What sort of person, if of course it was a person, could have written the Codex Gigas? And how did they write it? It is most certainly one of the world's most mysterious books. In 1988, while in Egypt, Hunting for ancient relics, Swiss archaeologist, Gregor Spree, would stumble across a once-in-a-lifetime find. After paying a handsome fee of $300 to be allowed to inspect a grave robber's collection, he would be handed a package, wrapped in rags, and apparently with quite a musky odor. Within, he would discover an enormous mummified finger. It measured an amazing 16 inches in length, resulting in height estimates of 16 plus feet, for the original owner of such a monstrous digit. Spree recounted the moment he laid eyes on the finger to a local press newspaper, when he released the photos to the public. Quote, I was allowed to take it in hand and also to take pictures. A bill was put next to it to get an idea of its enormous size. The bent finger was split open and covered with dried mold. It was surprisingly light, maybe a few hundred grams, my heart was in my throat. Some believe the finger may have belonged to an extinct prehistoric giant ape. But alas, like so many other artifacts of this nature, subsequently vanished, shortly after it gained public attention. Also the ape in question died out hundreds of thousands of years ago, and a digit of this ancient animal has never been found, we have only ever found small bone fragments and teeth. Imagine then the odds of finding a fully mummified finger from the animal, within a tomb raider's collections in Egypt. They are probably quite slim. Also leaving the question as to how it ended up mummified in Egypt a tough one to answer. He returned to Egypt in 2009 compelled to learn more about it, but unfortunately, by then, the old man who allowed Spory to take the pictures had vanished, and with him all traces of the mysterious finger. If there was found to indeed have been a race of giant, highly intelligent humans that colonized ancient Egypt, it would help tremendously in explaining the construction of the pyramids, 